Hi, I'm Edgar, and this is Tona Creed, sergeant and later captain in the Tanith First and Only Regiment, also known as Gaunt's Ghosts. Now, the attentive amongst you will have noticed that when I posted this picture of the Tanith First and Only models that I have and stripped the paint of, in comparison to the picture on the box of that same set, on the box there's this guy with a plasma gun, whereas in my picture of the paint strip models, Instead you have the female model which actually came from the blister pack sold separate from the main box. This is because the day that I walked into Games Workshop to buy the set, I really really wanted to have one of the female models but didn't have enough money to buy the box and the blister pack as well. I was also slightly uninterested in the plasma gunner because there's only passing references to any of the Tanith ever using plasma guns. Would have much rather had a flamer. And so someone else in the shop who had bought the blister pack happily traded me the female model for the model with the plasma gun. So thank you very much to whoever that was, and I'm going to get on and paint this one. So Tona Creed is the only one of the models that I have that's undeniably Vergast born rather than Tanith born. This of course being in the third book where on Vergast the Tanith first and only take heavy losses and due to Warmaster Makaroth's active consolidation I believe it's called. Any civilian who was involved in the fighting in the scratch companies and civilian militias could opt to join the regiments of the Imperial Guard and many of them chose to join the Tanith first and only. Replacing some of the severe losses that the Tanith had suffered and couldn't replace because well the supply of Tanith people is um well, not there anymore. So the vast majority of this model is painted in the same way that I've painted the previous models in the set. Putting a solid base coat of a darker colour and then bringing in a lighter colour and mixing it together. A little bit of wet blending, a little bit of edge highlighting. I'm not an amazing painter but I'm trying to bring in some of the light values that should be there and particularly important on the camo cloak to make sure that the light values are at least there so that when I later come on to do the camo pattern I can then copy those into the other colours I'm using for the cam camo pattern. So fans of the series will immediately recognise why I've chosen Tona to be the name of the unnamed model that I have here. And that is because Tona is the most commonly used female character in the series, appearing in the vast majority of books and having primary focus in quite a few stories as well. Right from the start we see her as a young woman involved in the gang life of Vervenhive as it is attacked by rival hive Ferrozoica. And even in this situation Tona has the compassion to look after two orphaned children, or at least she thinks they're orphaned at the time, and goes to great lengths to look after them, to feed them and to keep them safe, even risking herself doing so. And this protective, compassionate part of her character is what leads her to be such an effective infantry commander as well, first gaining the rank of sergeant and later captain. Because Tona is from Vervenhive, I'll be painting her skin in a different tone to that of most of the other models in the set. The book repeats several times that the Tanithborn have a very light skin, probably because they're based on the Scots, kind of Scots and Irish depending on which bit you're looking at. Vergasts, on the other hand, it doesn't specify exactly what their skin tone is, although it does say they have lighter skin tones. So I'm stuck with a Caucasian tone, but I want to bring it down darker than the very pale skin Tanith that I'm painting. And I hadn't fully planned through the painting scheme for the Vergast models when I was painting Toner. So when I took the brown paint to paint things like the last gun stock and the pouches and the scabbard for the Tanith war knife, I just continued on and painted her skin along with it, and her hair as well. And then I highlighted that with a mix of my darker Caucasian tone and the brown, and then finished up with the Caucasian on the top. Although along the way I found I was making some beautiful dark skin tones, and so I'm really looking forward to finding a model that I can paint with a much darker skin tone, because there's some really cool colour possibilities in those combinations. So I mentioned that this is one of the models that I paint stripped, in fact all of the Tanith first and only models I have paint stripped, but this model is the only one that I have a picture from before it was paint stripped. So this is what she looked like when I painted her in 2002, and as you'll see my painting has improved in recent months. And I say recent months because I never had the resources to learn from back in the day. 
there was regularly uh, painting guides for specific things in White Dwarf where it would say use this paint and then use this paint and then use this paint and you had to buy six or seven paints and I never had the money for that and so I never read any of those guides and there wasn't the easy access community that we have today back then and so I didn't really have many people to learn from and I didn't attend my local games workshop all that often either. So recently when I've got back into painting over the last year or two, the resources that are available now and easily accessible and digestible in video format, which is a format that I learned from quite well, I now know of techniques and equipment that I never knew existed back in the day. For example, the wet palette, which you can see on screen. I've only heard of the existence of a wet palette in the last year. Kind of an obvious concept, thinking about it. So the original painting for this model, and in fact almost all of the Imperial Guard models that I collected, were painted in the uniform of the Kekner Scratch Regiments, which is, of course, based loosely on the Scratch companies of Necropolis, where you would have individuals and squads and vehicles from different regiments that don't have enough presence to be a full regiment by themselves that are amalgamated into a solid fighting force in combination. And my idea for this was to end up with an Imperial Guard regiment based on as many different Imperial Guard models as I could find. And I ended up with a handful of Cadian and Catechin models because they are relatively common at that time. Unfortunately, the Mordians were kind of out of favor at that time and the Steel Legion models hadn't been made until a little bit later, I think. But I managed to squeeze in a few metal models here and there. And while I painted them in different ways, I always unified them with a solid black color on at least something. And in the case of the Tanith models, that was the black cloak. But now I'm repainting them in the colors they really should be, and that is the Tanith first and only, of course. So for those who haven't been following my reading progression, I've just reached Anarch, which is the latest book. It was released quite some time ago now, over a year, I think, as of the time of me reading it. But I wanted to go back and read the whole series through again to refresh my memory, and it's taken me this long to get to it, but I now finally get to read Anarch. And from what I understand, Tona and Kulia and the two kids, Yonsi and Dalin, are going to feature quite prominently, so looking forward to that. Even though this is one of the, quote, generic, unquote, models uh, from the blister packs that were sold separate to the main character box, there are actually a few decent details on here. We have a rag tied to the barrel of the last gun, and we also have dog tags visible just poking out the cloak. In some ways, this model is actually more detailed than the Corbeck model that I'll be painting in a few videos' time. And just while I'm finishing up the camo cloak and the rest of the details on the model, I should point out that I'm not doing the base in this video. I will be doing all of the basing together in a separate video. But with all that wrapped up, and with the model finished painted in the Tanith first and only colors, she's ready for a spray varnish and to go on the shelf with the others. And for me to just say, I'm Edscar, always will be, and thank you very much for watching.